Good morning. I hope everybody enjoyed their two snow days and had some time to rest and relax before your presentations today. Welcome parents, grandparents, board of trustee members, teachers, students, eighth graders. Um, our eighth grade students today will be presenting their capstone projects. This is something that some of our students have actually been working on since kindergarten. It is their culminating activity for our community service pillar at our school. And from kindergarten through sixth grade, our students are given the opportunity to participate in a variety of community service activities, which leads them to the ability to be able to plan, implement their own personal community service projects. Our eighth grade students that are sitting before you today and that will be presenting to you today have been working on these particular projects for over a year. They started as seventh grade students first brainstorming what they wanted to do, what types of activities they wanted to participate in, and how they wanted to make a difference and make an impact on their community. From there, they chose a specific organization and worked closely with their advisors, their advising groups, and their parents to plan their own capstone presentation. They then presented to a panel that included either myself or Mr. Perna and two other advisors where they presented their plan of action and what they were going to do over the course of their project. At that point, they were given either a green light, which means go ahead, you're good to go, a yellow light, which means there's some things we need to work on, or a red light, which means we have some stuff that we have to do in order to get this project ready to go. All of our students, after getting the green light, were given the ability to start their community service projects. What you will see today, if you have never been a part of our capstone experience, is something that will both inspire you and amaze you. It will amaze you at the fact that our students are able to stand up and talk so eloquently about the projects that they have been working on so hard and the impact that they were able to make on their local, national, or global community. And it will inspire you to go out and also participate in community service events. What you will see today is an amazing feat that our students have been working closely on with their parents and advisors. One of the things I noticed about this year, particularly about this group of eighth grade students, is not only were they supported by their advisor and their parents, but also very closely by their own advising groups. Their groups banded together and helped each other com to complete their capstone projects. They participated in their projects. They supported them. It was an amazing thing to see, so I would like to congratulate all of the advising groups for working so closely together. Today we have half of our eighth grade students presenting. Tomorrow we will have the other half and then we will cap that off with our capstone lunch. I hope that you all enjoy the presentations that you see today. Our first group that we will be presenting is Melissa Hrolicek's group. This is the first time that Melissa has worked with a group of students from sixth grade all the way through their capstone experience. And I think she's done a really amazing job. So Melissa, thank you so much for all your time for your students. Thank you, Mrs. Olnowski. Uh, good morning, parents, faculty, staff, and students. I'm going to put this up a little bit. Okay. Um, it is such an honor to be here this morning with all of you, and I'm so excited to witness all of the students' uh, presentations this morning. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of my advisees. Um, it has been such a great journey with them since sixth grade. Um, and it's been really special because I've been with them since sixth grade. Um, and it has been a true honor to witness their growth. Um, and to see them today really as young adults. Um, you will see within my advising group, and I think with all, um, within all of the advising groups that will present today and tomorrow, their unique qualities. Uh, and their individual gifts and strengths. Um, I feel that both today and tomorrow, we are truly celebrating their gifts and what they are bringing to the world. Um, and I'm so excited for you to see um, what my advising group is going to um, bring to you this morning and to witness how they have already helped to change the world. Um, so without further ado, I am going to ask Alia Butt to come up and she's going to present to you on her project um, connected to the Central Asia Institute. Alia. Hello and good morning. 
morning, students, faculty, family, and friends of BFCCPF. My name is Alia Butt, and I'm in Mr. Callahan's homeroom and Ms. Hrolovchik's advising room. During the time of choosing my capstone project, I realized I needed to choose a topic that was close and meaningful to me. I knew that if it was a topic I was interested in, I would really enjoy completing it throughout the next year. When reading an autobiography known as Three Cups of Tea by Greg Mortensen, I became interested in working on the lack of education around the world. His book helped me realize the importance of how a simple man such as Mr. Mortensen could help change the lives of so many children and parents with something only as small as a penny. Education should be a gift for everyone. However, in reality, some are just not as fortunate as others. In some countries, children, especially girls, are not permitted to attend school due to their gender, age, ethnicity, or conflicts outside of the home. Being a young girl myself, I found this unbelievable that girls could not be educated in, world, in parts of the world. This is why, for my capstone, I decided to work with the Central Asia Institute. This extraordinary nonprofit organization, founded by Mr. Mor Greg Mortensen, works with countries across the globe, such as Pakistan and Afghanistan, to help promote education in a peaceful and safe environment. When I first reached out to the organization, I was greeted with a warm welcome and an endless list of opportunities for me to pursue. I finally chose to use the Pennies for Peace program created by the Central Asia Institute. My goals were to first educate my peers about the worldwide issue of illiteracy in third world countries such as Pakistan and Afghanistan. I completed this goal by going to each classroom and explaining the hardships these children have to go through. We discussed school supplies, transportation, food, clothing, and classroom settings. The students at BFCCPS were amazed and at the same time shocked at the cost of a single penny and how poor countries cannot even afford this. My second goal was to raise $50 through the Pennies for Peace Foundation. I exceeded my goal by $90, raising a total of $140 for this organization. Originally, I was going to use the Pennies for Peace drive with only one class. Instead, I wanted to involve grades 4 through 8. This consisted of placing buckets in grades 4 through 8 homerooms. I then asked the students to make small donations for the drive for two weeks in May of 2014. I loved seeing the expressions of the kids' faces when I would talk to them about what they were doing and who they were helping. To encourage the students to donate money, I told each class that the homeroom with the most amount of money would receive a party. I, along with a few of my friends, decided to have a henna station at the party. We would draw different patterns and designs on their hands and wrists. I decided to use henna because it is a traditional art used during special occasions to symbolize luck and joy. This was my way of showing the children appreciation. By the end of the two weeks, when 14,000 cents had been counted by hand, $140 would be going towards four years worth of classroom supplies, uniforms, and food for schools across the globe. The major obstacle I faced was time management. I had a very busy end of the year for seventh grade, and my summer was occupied with a geometry course. My last obstacle was that I did not know at all how to be creative with my capstone. I did not want to stick to the book, however, I did not want my capstone to be crazy and impossible. I did end up finding a balance between the two, and I can never be happier with the outcome. Throughout the capstone process, I made many improvements with myself. A wise man named Gandhi once said that we should be the change we wish to see in the world. I believe that I have been a change, and it has been for someone that I have not met, and I may never meet in my life. I learned that I must never give up on anyone or anything, because it means that I am giving up on myself and all that I have worked for. Capstone may be stressful at times, and it is definitely not the easiest thing to accomplish. However, the benefits from completing a capstone project are endless. I have so many people to thank because without them, I could not complete all the work that I did. First to Laura Brin from the Central Asia Institute. I'd like to thank my advisor, Ms. Horocek, and my advising group for always supporting me and helping me. I'd like to thank my family, especially my mom, for helping me wherever and wherever. And I'd like to thank Mr. Duke and his homeroom class for taking pictures during my party. I'd like to thank Madame Alou for helping me with work, and I'd like to thank my friends Mahita, Smiha, Sophie, and Nikita. And in conclusion, I would like to thank all of you who participated in my fundraiser. Thanks to you, I'm able to send a few years of help to students just like us. Thank you for listening and enjoy your day. Okay, thank you, Alia. Awesome job. Um, up next, we have Sam Collins speaking on autism awareness. Come on up, Sam.
fellow students, parents, and faculty of the FCCPS. My name is Zan Collins, and for my capstone, I chose to do Autism Awareness. Autism is a horrible disorder that affects one out of every 64 children born in the United States today. No one knows how autism came to be, but we do know that it does horrible things to the children and adults who are affected by it. I chose to do my capstone on autism because someone close to me has autism, and I'd like to give every child the same love and support that he was able to get. Autism is a disorder that causes many different neurological effects, ranging, ranging from not being able to communicate for years to not being able to process information for up to several seconds. This disorder makes it very hard for kids and adults to communicate with their peers and, um, and have good communication. Kids with autism are actually smarter than the average person and is proven in their IQ, but their communication can cause people to think that this is not true. And they can achieve just as much or even more than someone who does not have autism. I had three goals during the course of my capstone. So first, I wanted to raise awareness about what autism is and what it does to the people who are affected. Secondly, I wanted to educate a local community about autism and what they could do to help the people who have it. And third, I wanted to raise $125 to a local autism support organization. I achieved all these goals during the process of my capstone project. In fact, I raised $304 by selling t-shirts, jewelry, and stickers, all supporting autism. Also, I educated and raised awareness by selling multiple booths, by selling jewelry at multiple booths in Milford and Framingham. I also set up a booth at the Framingham Christmas Market and was able to educate over 100 people about autism, autism and the effects it has on the people who are affected by it. I, put, uh, I also set up another booth at the Milford Regional Medical Center and I helped support their cause. Throughout my project, I faced many obstacles which I had to overcome. The main obstacle I faced was a lack of time management and communication with my family and advisor. This led to a lack of ideas regarding places where I could fundraise at and raise awareness at. I asked different organizations if I could sell autism jewelry and raise autism awareness at the premises with little initial success. The final problem I encountered was finding an organization to raise the money for. I contacted three different organizations multiple times and got no response. I eventually gave up on all three of these organizations and chose to support the House of Possibilities in Easton, Massachusetts. Some of the positive results of this project were that I raised a total of $304 and I was able to educate over 100 different people about the autism, the effects it has, and what we can do to help. The money I raised went towards getting new books and toys for the kids with autism and an autism shelter called the House of Possibilities. The books that they were able to buy with the money I raised was able to help teach the kids and adults with autism how to read and what to learn what they were reading. I learned that the support and care that you can give autistic kids can change their lives forever, allowing them to learn to read and increase their full potential. I also learned that that no matter how much support you give to find a cure for autism, it helps. If we all support autism research, we might be able to find a cure for this horrible disorder. I'd like to thank my mom for supporting me and driving me where I needed to be, my dad for helping me find places to promote my autism awareness project, my grandmother for all the help and support she gave me throughout this project, Ms. Herlchek for guiding me through this process and for all the help she gave, my advising group for supporting me and keeping me going throughout this process, and but most of all, I'd like to thank my, my relative who inspired me to go through with this project. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Zan. Great job. And up next is Kaylee DeSimone. And she is going to tell you about her work with Girls Incorporated and Mass Miss Amazing. All right, Kaylee. Hello, students, faculty, and families of BFCCPS. My name is Kaylee Desimone, and around this time last year, I was sitting in the audience with no idea what I was going to do for my capstone. And before I knew it, it was my turn to decide my topic. Many ideas and thoughts were flying through my head at the time, and I didn't know which one I would focus on. Finally, I narrowed my choices down to two, something involving sports or self-esteem. Choosing between these two topics was hard, but finally, while I was brainstorming ideas, I discovered I had more passion and ideas about self-esteem. 
What is self-esteem? That was the question I asked myself while brainstorming. I researched this question a lot and was surprised at how much self-esteem impacts everyone's daily life. A summary of all my research told me that self-esteem is how one views themselves and their, and their level of personal respect and confidence. I also learned that there are two types of self-esteem, high self-esteem and low self-esteem. If someone has high self-esteem, that means that they are happy with who they are and don't want to change anything about them. If a person has low self-esteem, this means that they tend to want to change anything they think is bad about themselves, whether it's external or internal, and they try to fit in with everyone else and try to reach what they think is perfect. My, my three original goals for Capstone were to volunteer at Girls Inc., raise money for Massachusetts Miss Amazing, and to create an Instagram page to raise awareness. I accomplished all my goals, however I did not meet them within my timeline, I didn't make the amount of money I wished, and then we're volunteering, I was volunteering into what I originally planned. At Girls Inc., my goal was to volunteer 16 hours during the summer, but instead I volunteered for 10 hours during October. While I was at Girls Inc., I worked with young girls in dance, vocal, exercise, and art classes. These classes taught the girls how to express themselves and how to live a healthy life. For Massachusetts Miss Amazing, I wanted to raise $400 by early August. Sadly, I didn't meet this goal, but I still raised a good amount of money, which was around $260. I added another part to my capstone for Massachusetts Miss Amazing, and that is to volunteer a pageant February 28, 2015. My last goal, the Instagram page, I completed it as planned. I reached 100 followers and had at least 11 likes on each post. I reached this goal by early November. I educated others about my project in many ways. I created an Instagram page to raise awareness about self-esteem. I spoke at an assembly to grades five to seven, explaining different aspects of self-esteem. <coughs> at the YMCA family night, I set up a table with a poster explaining everything about Massachusetts Miss Amazing to inform people about my project as they walked by. The last way I educated others about my project was by selling bracelets. I went to every classroom telling them about the sale and giving a brief description of my project. Like every capstone project, I ran into some obstacles. One of my main obstacles was time management. During the summer, I didn't put enough time into my project, and the consequence was I did not meet some goals. If I had created a schedule and stuck to it, I could have finished my project by the end of summer, and I would not have had to worry about it during the school year. Another obstacle I encountered was communication issues. This issue occurred while I was trying to plan days in the summer to come in to volunteer at Girls Day. The woman I had been talking with thought I was coming in one week while I thought I was coming in a different week. This miscommunication caused me to be unable to volunteer during the summer. I had many positive results from my capstone project. I was able to raise approximately $260 for Massachusetts Miss Amazing, volunteer at Girls Inc., and educate people about my project. Another positive result was that I introduced someone to Massachusetts Miss Amazing, and they decided to look into it for their daughter. The capstone process helped me learn many things that helped me become a better student in the future. I have learned better communication skills, including finalizing plans at least a week before, and to always stay in contact with people. Another important lesson I learned is not to put crucial things aside like capstone. I need to put them aside to focus on school. The most important lesson I learned is to never give up. No matter how many obstacles I encounter, never give up and work through everything. A number of people helped me along my capstone journey and I'd like to thank them. My parents were always supporting me throughout the entire project. Mr. Perna, Mrs. Zolnowski, Ms. Herlicek, and my advising group for being supportive and being and giving me new ideas on how to make my project even more successful. Haley Dion for volunteering with me at Girls Inc. and helping me to communicate with the employees at Girls Inc. Mrs. Dion, who created a carpool with my mom to get Haley and I to and from Girls Inc. Kathy Autumn, Director of Volunteers at Girls Inc. of Worcester, for making it possible for me to volunteer at Girls Inc. Andrea Nevins, the Co-Director at Massachusetts Miss Amazing, for giving me all the information I needed. Finally, I would like to thank my friends and everyone who contributed to my fundraising, making my capstone a great success. Thank you for listening, and good luck to the seventh graders on their capstone project. connected to cyberbullying and internet safety. Come on up, Shraddha. I would like everybody to close their eyes for a minute. 
Raise your hand when you have an account on one of these social media websites. Please keep your hand up as I call out the names. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Kick, text messaging, a phone, a computer, or access to the internet. Please keep your hands up, open your eyes, and look around. If your hand is up, you could be at potential risk of cyberbullying and should be educated in internet safety. Hi, my name is Shrada Iyer, and this is why I chose to do Netiquette, Think Before You Text, for my capstone project. With the popularity of social media going up, the risk of cyberbullying is getting higher. Cyberbullying is caused by a lack of caution on the internet, so I wanted to create fun ways to remind people to be cautious on the internet and how to prevent cyberbullying. When I was figuring out what to do for my capstone project, my reasoning was that the best way to remind students about internet safety was a website, so that they could have occasional reminders on their feed. I made a Facebook, Google+, Plus, and email account, and eventually a Tumblr page for people to follow. I also made a short educational video with the help of my advising group and had the school participate in Blue Shirt Day, an event hosted by Octo on October 6th annually by Stomp Out Bullying. With these three plans, I was able to complete my goal of educating my community. I involved my community and my school through three projects. The first project I completed was the video. It depicted a scenario in which a student was being cyberbullied and what to do if you were a victim or a bystander in this situation. It was an entertaining way to teach my classmates what to do in the event of cyberbullying, and I'm pretty sure my advising group had a lot of fun. Next, I created my Facebook, Google+, and email. They proved to be a great way to be safe on the internet and were very easy to maintain. People who followed were able to see posts and reminders about internet safety. Lastly, BFCCPS participated on Blue Shirt Day on October 6, 2014. I helped spread awareness by also buying an official t-shirt for Blue Shirt Day this year. All one needed to do to participate was just wear a blue shirt to show their support. Overall, I had a successful report project. However, I did make some enhancements to my action plan to be more successful. These enhancements would ensure that I was promoting internet safety and anti-cyberbullying to the best of my ability. I realized that my Google Plus page wasn't doing so well, and I only had two followers, myself and my dad. So I terminated that, and in its place, I created a Tumblr anonymous ask page where anyone could send me questions about cyberbullying. When I was managing my websites, I noticed that I wasn't involving my followers as much as I could, and my posts had gotten slightly boring. So I decided to make a logo to use as a profile picture and have a contest for people to vote for. I made three logos, and I asked my students, my followers to vote for each one. In the end, the logo that won is shown on the slide previous. The picture shown earlier was some artwork that I had made during the summer. Finally, I collaborated with Kindness Week, a project run by Regan Patterson for her capstone project. Blue Shirt Day kicked off Kindness Week, and both projects were a huge success. I didn't make any major changes, but I rather enhanced my capstone for a more enforced message. My outcome was a successful capstone project, in which both my community and I learned a great deal. I learned a lot about the impacts of cyberbullying, which were worse than I originally thought. However, before you start to panic, I also learned that there were many organizations working to stop this problem. About myself, I learned that if I enjoy what I'm doing, I really don't think of it, think of it as work. As a word of advice to the 7th graders, capstone, you should be, capstone should be something you enjoy doing, not a chore. Choose something you like, and the results will be phenomenal. I enjoyed my capstone project, and the result, result was extremely successful, but not without the help of some important people. I would like to thank my advising group, Nihal, Luke, Alia, Kaylee, Kimia, Zan, and Anish, for helping me throughout my project and keeping me on track, as well as Ms. Herlicek for having my back during the whole project. I would like to thank my parents for supporting me throughout my project, making sure I stayed on my goals. And also Mr. Perna for helping me finalize my plan and stay on track as well. Also, my capstone project would not have been as amazing as it was without the participants of Blue Shirt Day. And this project was a great and memorable experience that I will cherish. Finally, thank you for listening and I hope you all have a nice day. Strata, excellent job. And up next we have Nihal Kamak, who's going to share his experience with us on helping orphanages in India. Nihal, come on up. <laughs> Hello, students, parents, and faculty of BFCCPS. My name is Nihal Kamal, and for my capstone, I decided to help the orphans. 
The issue that I decided to help with for my capstone was that some countries have orphanages that have bad living conditions. The kids there have nothing to call their own. They don't have many of the things that we take for granted, and they don't have many forms of entertainment. Most of the kids in orphanages don't usually ever get adopted, so many kids live their entire lives like this, which is very sad. I helped with this issue by working with the Bharat Sevashram organization, which is the name of a line of orphanages in India. I wanted to work with these people because in 2012, I visited India with my family, and while we were there, we went to see an orphanage belonging to this organization, and the living conditions were dismal. The kids there had little in the way of entertainment. The closest thing that the kids had was a 20-inch TV that was in the room the size of one of our classrooms. And once a day, the kids would cram themselves into this room and watch this TV for two hours. I held a toy drive to collect donations to give to the kids in India so that they could have something to call their own, mainly toys, blankets, and other things. Over there is a picture of the initial donations I sent, and below that is a picture of my relatives give, giving one of the kids at the orphanage a donation. The results, the response that I got was very positive. I also raised awareness about this issue by giving a speech at a school assembly and educating my local neighborhood about this issue. There were many obstacles that I encountered throughout my capstone. A major obstacle that I faced was that the organization that I wanted to work with, Wat Sevashram, did not respond until halfway through step four, which meant that I did not have as much time to complete it. I was also unable to put my toy drive in all the places that I wanted to. I had originally planned to put my toy drive at the local YMCA and library, as well as here at BFCCPS and in my local neighborhood. However, the YMCA and the library rejected my request, which made me think that my toy drive would not be successful enough. Fortunately for me, it was more than enough. Time management was also a major obstacle, as it is for everyone. I had a big problem with this in the seventh grade part of my capstone, which caused me to neglect my project for three months. My donations also had a few small problems. Due to shipping costs, I was unable to send the donations that I collected to India until July, when I will be personally visiting India and I can deliver the toys to the kids. Also, ironically, while I thought my toy drive was not going to be successful enough, it actually turned out to be a little too successful. I originally expected to raise only 50 donations, but ended up raising 102 donations, which led to me not being able to send all the donations that I collected to India. However, I overcame this obstacle by donating a portion of my donations to a local charity here in Massachusetts. While I did face many obstacles during the course of my capstone, I did have many positive results. My toy drive was extremely successful, raising 102 donations and surpassing my goal by almost double. The orphanage in India that I was helping will receive my donations in July when I will be visiting them. I educated my local community about this issue and also learned a lot about it myself and discovered that it is a much bigger issue than I originally thought. This project also helped me become a better person in general, as I learned many skills that will help me in the future, such as learning how to talk to strangers, communication via email, and time management. There are a few people that I would like to thank, as they were all important to my capstone. I would like to thank my parents for helping me and supporting me through this entire capstone. I would like to thank Ms. Krolicek, my advisor, Mr. Purna, for helping me organize my toy drive, I'd like to thank my advising group for supporting me through this entire capstone. You guys were great. I'd like to thank my relatives in India for supporting me through this capstone and also helping me with it. And last but not least, I'd like to thank everybody who donated and supported my drive, who you guys were the main reason that my capstone was a success. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Nihal. Great job. And up next, we have Kimia Kim, who's going to speak to us about her work with the Two Million Dogs Foundation. Come on up, Kimia. Good morning, students and faculty at BFCCPS. My name is Kimia Kim and for my capstone project, I hosted a two-mile puppy up walk for human and canine cancer. The organization that I worked with throughout my capstone project was the Two Million Dogs Foundation. This is a nonprofit organization that helps host walks all over the country. It raises donations and spreads awareness to understanding the links between both human and canine cancer and funding cancer studies that will benefit both pets and people. For my capstone project, I hosted a two-mile walk at the Franklin Town Common. This happened over the summer on August 23, 2014. It happened from about 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. 
It was about $10 for kids and $15 for adults. Throughout my capstone process, I also raised donations and spread awareness for it too. One in general is cancer. Cancer is a disorder that is caused by cell growth that results in abnormal mass of tissue growth. This disease has impacted many people and animals all over the world. It is estimated about 46 million dogs a year are dying from cancer, and about 36 children a day are being diagnosed with cancer. There are multiple speculations for what the causes of cancer could be. Some of these are genetic influences, environmental influences, exposure to chemicals, and certain nutrients. There are common symptoms found in the animal when an animal is affected by um, cancer. These symptoms could be wound that is not healing, swelling in the bone, lethargy, and internal bleeding. Throughout my years at the VFCCPS, no one had ever done this project, so I wanted to try something new. The main reason I wanted to do this project though was because many people and animals all over the world are touched by cancer, and I wanted to make a change. I want to educate my community about cancer and how it greatly affects us today. I can connect to this project because my dog Magic was diagnosed with kidney cancer and also my uncle was diagnosed with cancer too. This had inspired me to help others and help take a step closer to finding a cure. I educated my community, my school, and many others in several ways. At the beginning of my capstone project, I gave out flyers to the 5th through 8th graders and I also had an assembly at the school. I also put up several flyers in Stop and Shop, the Acorn Animal Hospital, and the Newton Leslie Hospital. Unexpectedly, I was also put into two new newspaper articles about my capstone project and also about my school. To raise donations and spread awareness about my walk, Peggy Foster, a staff member of the Two Million Dogs Foundation, set up a website for me so people can donate and learn about my walk, and I was also featured in the Two Million Dogs Foundation. Throughout my capstone project, I ran into several obstacles. My major obstacle was time management. In step three, I had put off making phone calls to organizations, but I quickly resolved that obstacle by learning confidence when speaking to strangers. My sec second obstacle was finding an organization to work with. At the beginning of my project, I mainly focused on trying to volunteer at an oncology hospital, but at being denied for having no experience and for being underage, I chose to work with a nonprofit organization instead. I mainly focused on, knew this project was going to take a lot of time and effort, but one of the most important aspects of my project that I had mastered was patience. A difficult obstacle that I had overcame was receiving approval from the town of Franklin for having an event on their town common. And my final obstacle was receiving donations in the beginning of my project. My capstone project was a complete success, and I had many positive results from it. I reached most of my goals for my action plan, plus I received over $900 when my original goal was $100. I had about 20 people come to my walk and I fully educated my community and school about canine cancer. This project was a great learning experience and has taught me many things. It's taught me not to procrastinate and get everything done early and on time. It has also taught me to persevere through tough obstacles and also given me confidence when speaking to strangers. I would like to thank many people. I would like to thank my family for being one of my biggest supporters of me throughout my tax and process. I would like to thank my advising group for giving me advice and tips. Ms. Karlacek for being there for me and guiding me through the whole capstone process. Mr. Perna for helping me and answering all my questions about Capstan. I'd like to thank Ginger Morgan for working with me throughout my project. Peggy Foster for setting up the website for me. Kaylee Desimone for helping me and giving out flyers to all the 5th or 8th graders. And finally, I'd like to thank all those who have donated and came to my walk. Capstone is a great learning experience and it can teach you many things. This was a great learning experience for me and I wish the current 7th grade good luck on their Capstone project. Thanks for listening. Hello and good morning students, faculty, and staff of BFCCPS. My name is Anish Raivarapu and I've always enjoyed working with animals. For my project, I chose saving the Bengal tiger. The Bengal tiger is on the brink of extin extinction and its numbers are declining rapidly, which have negative effects through the environment. 
I chose this project for my capstone of Bengal tigers because the tigers are interesting animals and are needed for the rich diversity of nature. Tiger numbers are decreasing rapidly. About 100 years ago, there were about 100,000 tigers. Now, there are fewer than 2,500 tigers, and their numbers are decreasing because of deforestation and excessive wood removal. I set out to spread awareness about Bengal tigers in several different ways. First, I set up an electronic picture frame in the office with facts displaying about this displaying the tiger. I also created a game on scratch.mic.edu that you could play on the school website, which also helps spread awareness about the Bengal tigers. I spread awareness to my friends and uh, family by telling them what I was doing for my project and how they could help out. I educated my local community about my capstone project by going to my local temple, talking to various people there, and asking them if they'd like to help out by making a donation. I had a few goals for my project. My first goal was to raise $150 through spreading awareness by the picture frame and giving an oral presentation to my community. My second goal was to create a game using the app Scratch that people could play on the school's website to raise an awareness about the Bengal Tigers. My last goal was to set up a donation bin next to my picture, for picture frame, which was playing my slides about the endangered Bengal Tiger, and I would donate all, fun all my funds to the World Wildlife Fund. My capstone project had a few obstacles. My first obstacle was to fix all the glitches on the Scratch game that the glitches included crashing, delays, and random blocks appearing in front of you when you least expect it. I fixed these glitches while working with Mr. Stemple on my game after school. Together, we shrunk all the sizes of the, all the objects, and that helped resolve the problem. It took us several tries, but we finally got the game to run smoothly. My second obstacle was to create all the slides for the electronic picture frame, because the picture frame only accepted one type of format. I overcame this obstacle by using Microsoft PowerPoint and downloading the whole presentation as an image file, and then uploading all of those images into my picture frame. My third and final obstacle was fundraising. I found out that some people are happy to donate money while some are not. In fact, fundraising was much harder than what I initially thought because I thought like people would always be, um, donate for me. Some positive results of my project. I have raised $155.08 in total. My picture frame got, had contributed $17.88. Also, with my, my visits to the temple a couple of times, I have raised $93 by talking to people there and asking them if they would like to donate. Finally, I went to PetSmart and again, I raised $44 by again talking to people and asking them if they want to make a donation. Also, I was very surprised, but my scratch game actually had 96 plays as of yesterday. And I was not expecting that much, so thank you to all the people who played that game. In every project, you always have some you always have something to learn. In my capstone project, I learned a few things. First, I have learned time management, because I took geometry over the summer, and after the course was done, I did almost no work on capstone until the week before school started, which is when I started to work on my game with Mr. Stemple and create the slides for the picture frame. And I didn't enjoy the last week of school because I had to do a lot of work. Next, I learned to speak with strangers with confidence, because at first you think, oh, I'll talk to that guy about my project, but when you're talking to him, you'll stutter and you'll get tensed up. So I've learned to just be more easygoing and talk to people with confidence. Patience is the next big thing I've learned while doing my capstone project, because while you're waiting and waiting for people to come ask, ask you about your project, it gets quite aggravating when you have people just walk by and don't, don't even like, look at you and, or see what you're doing. But you, if you wait eventually, you'll get people who will ask you about your project and maybe make a donation. Organization plays a huge role during capstone because it gets everything to run smoothly. I have learned to be organized during my capstone process because at the beginning of the process in seventh grade, I fell behind and it took me a long time to get back on track. So I've learned that I have to stay on top of things. Finally, I've learned that fundraising is hard because Every person will donate some amount of money, but you have those people who just don't want to donate anything. They don't even care. So that's what makes fundraising hard. Finally, I would like to thank the following. I would like to thank my parents for supporting me through the whole process, Ms. Felicek for guiding me through each step of the process, Mr. Stemple for helping me fix the problems with my game, Mr. Perna for extending additional help, all the donators for donating money to me for, to save the Bengal Tiger, all the Scratch Game players, my advising group for keeping me on track, Mr. Duke for putting my game on the website, and Mr. Belke for giving me additional assistance when needed. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Anish. Great job. And
uh, last but not least, um, the final, my final advisee to present this morning is Lu Kiang, who's going to speak with you regarding his work with the Wounded Warrior Project. Come on up, Lu. Hello students, parents, and faculty of BFCCPS. My name is Luke Young, and for my capstone project, I worked with the Wounded Warrior Project, also known as WWP. The Wounded Warrior Project is a nonprofit organization that raises money to donate to war veteran, veterans and, sol and soldiers in need of care, supplies, support, and medical attention. The reason I chose WWP as my capstone project is because one day I was driving through a town and I noticed an army veteran running and he had a fake leg. I looked closer and I noticed that he had a WWP shirt on and I decided to research WWP when I got home. Seeing that the man still had the courage to persevere and keep doing what he loved, even with an injury that bad, I realized that WWP was a great organization and I wanted to spread awareness for it through my capstone project. To raise awareness for WWP, I decided that I would host a dodgeball tournament. The tournament would have a $4 entrance fee, and I would sell concessions for the kids to purchase at the tournament. All kids in grades 5 through 8 could attend the tournament. I held the tournament right here at BFCCPS, and there was a prize given to the winner. My original goal was to raise at least $250, but I exceeded that goal by $11, raising about $261. Throughout my capstone experience, I fought through multiple obstacles. One obstacle that I faced was the lack of sold tickets. When I first started my project, I, few, there were very few sales. No one was purchasing tickets, and not, after two days of very few sales, I just decided to go around and ask everyone whether they could go or not. Everyone who said that they could go would have their name marked down, and I, I would make them pay at the door. Many people who said that they could go didn't end up coming, so I had to change up the teams a little bit. In the end, everything was resolved and everything was a success. Another obstacle that I faced when I, I was doing my project was I emailed WWP asking for a guest speaker, but I never got a response. So I decided that I'd have to talk about WWP some, by myself. I decided to show a video about WWP and talk a little about, about the Wounded Warrior Project, and what they do to help the veterans and soldiers. I also told the kids what they could do to help support WWP and help WWP achieve their goal. My project had multiple positive results. My project not only raised $261, but it raised awareness about WWP. I taught others about WWP and what they could do to help. My project also taught me many things and I learned to be patient while working with others on big projects. And I also learned to be a better leader. The event taught me to stay focused and calm at all times, no matter what happens. The capstone experience took a lot of hard work and effort, and I could not have made it through without the help of the following people. My, mom, my parents for helping me come up with an idea to raise money and awareness and to choose the project. My advising group for helping me run the tournament. My advisor, Ms. Rolichek, for helping me come up with ideas and what to do at the tournament. AJ Bremser for helping me advertise the event and sell tickets. Mr. Perna and Mrs. Zelnowski and the coaches for giving me all the space for the tournament and all those who donated to my project. Also, I'd like to wish a good luck to all the seventh graders beginning their capstone experience. Thank you very much. Our next group to present is Mrs. Moreau's advising group. She too has been with these students since um, sixth grade. This is her first time working with students through the capstone process. 
Um, and she actually last this year began a new position in our school as a first grade assistant in Mrs. Setti's classroom. And she asked before accepting that position if she would take it as long as she could continue to work with this, the eighth grade students through their capstone process. She thought that it would not be fair to leave them halfway through the process and she really wanted to see them through. And I think that shows a great dedication on her behalf. So please welcome Mrs. Moyes. My pleasure to stand here and introduce the next capstone pre presenters. I'm extremely proud and honored to lead this amazing group of students. Their hard work and dedication to the capstone process is evident in the amazing accomplishments that they have completed over the past year. <coughs> Molly, Sam, Amy, Mahita, Sophie, Mitchell, Amanda, Malika, and Spencer. Your presentations today are the culmination of your hard work and dedication. Enjoy this opportunity to showcase your amazing accomplishments. I'm still very proud of all of you. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Molly Bogner, who's going to discuss the Guild of St. Agnes. Good morning, students, faculty, and friends of BRCCPS. My name is Molly Bogner, and for my capstone project, I chose to work with the Guild of St. Agnes. Each week, almost 11 million children younger than five are in some type of daycare arrangement. These kids are in daycare for about 36 hours a week. The Guild of St. Agnes is a daycare support center for children whose parents cannot afford daycare costs. Their mission is to provide families with quality, affordable, early childhood education and school age programs in a safe, nurturing environment for children four weeks to 12 years. The Guild's main center is in Worcester. However, they support daycares in many different towns in Worcester County. I chose this project because I like working with children but never realized how expensive childcare can be. I contacted the Director of Human Resources at the Guild, Sharon Woodbury. She said it was okay for me to help and so I told her that I planned to raise money. Mrs. Woodbury said she needed diapers, wipes, and gift cards. My original plan was to have a diaper drive for my church and a moving night at BACCPS to raise money for these items while raising awareness along the way. After I presented to the caption committee, they gave me the green light to proceed with my project. After I began to, to look for a date for my movie night, I found out that the PCO was holding their own movie night the night that I had planned to do my movie night. Then I decided I probably shouldn't hold the movie night. I told Mrs. Moreau, and she agreed. So I had to brainstorm a new plan. Before the school year was over, I decided to have a popsicle thing on set. I worked with two other girls in my advising group, Amy and Malika, on fundraising to the sale. The three of us worked together to raise about $45 each. I added a donation for my own personal charity fund. We had a popsicle sale during the week of June 19th. I spread awareness of the Guild of St. Agnes through my popsicle sale. We posted flyers around the school with a brief description of each of our capstone projects. We also posted it in the pink sheet to educate others and publicize our popsicle sale. My mom and I went to buy the gift cards and drive over to the center located in Worcester to give Mrs. Woodbury the gift cards. As well as raising money, I decided to volunteer my time for the Guild of St. Agnes. A member of my church, Ann Kay, runs a home daycare that is sponsored by the Guild. It is located in the town of Milford. Over the past summer, I went to Ann's house to help out with the children. Watching children, children can be quite challenging because children can be quite unpredictable. But I was so impressed by Ann Kay's patience with the children. In total, there were eight children in her house every day from the surrounding towns of Milford. The guild sends out a bus to all of the children's homes for transportation. The daycare starts at 7 in the morning, and the kids go home at about 5 at night. At Anne's specific daycare, there were, their age groups ranges from younger than age 1 to age 11. I came from her house from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. during the week for a few weeks over the summer. and mainly needed help during lunch when she had to watch the kids but also make their lunches at the same time. In the morning, I was outside playing with the kids. When the weather permitted, we played with bubbles, bouncy balls, hula hoops, and a sandbox by the edge of our yard. After playing outside, we went into the house and played inside. I read books to them. While they were playing, Anne went to make their lunch, which was always very balanced. The kids would come to the bathroom to wash their hands, hands and then they would sit down to eat lunch. After lunch, the kids sat down in the living room and watched TV, or they could read their books while they waited for their turn to brush their teeth. After they finished with their teeth, they went downstairs for a nap. 
After this point, some parents came to pick up their kids. Being there, me, being there to help out made me realize this is hard work. <laughs> Anne told me that during the school year, some of the older tr children are taught how to spell and do simple math problems. I enjoyed working with the children. It has inspired me to continue volunteering with children. I plan to go back there this summer. Some obstacles that I faced in working with the project were time management and dates for activities. I feel as though I had a good start with my project for time, but as the new school year started with a lot more homework and tasks to complete, I just didn't have time to do all that I planned. I encountered another obstacle when I tried to get gift cards to Mrs. Woodbury. I was supposed to arrive at the center at 4.30 to meet Mrs. Mrs. Woodbury and give her the donations because her office closes at 5. Unfortunately, my mom and I lost our way and we had to call her and tell her we were late. She gave us the donations over the phone and we finally found the center at 5.05. The gift card made families happy. I think that I learned a lot through this experience. I think that in future projects, I will know how to manage my time. I, will, I will also learned how to reach out to my community. In all, I think that my capstone was a success. I think I completed a lot throughout the course of the capstone process. I think that I, I would really like to thank everyone who helped me in my capstone journey. I would like to thank my mom for taking me everywhere and supporting me. Mrs. Morero, who is my advisor and helped me so much during capstone. I would also like to thank Anne Kay, who was such a great, great daycare provider. I would also like to thank Amy, my friend who was always there for me when I needed help, and Malika, who ran the popsicle sale with Amy and me. Thank you for listening. Um, next, I would like to introduce Mitchell Forsyth and Owen Meese, who worked on the BFCCPS Community Garden. Hello, fellow students, faculty, and parents of BFCCPS. My name is Owen Meese, and I've been going to BFCCPS since kindergarten. For my capstone project, I wanted to address the issue of hunger. The BFCCPS Community Garden seems like an excellent way to keep a legacy project going, help bring awareness to the BFCCPS community on the issue of hunger in our community, and make donations to the Franklin Food Pantry in an effort to help aid those in need. Good morning. My name is Mitchell Forsyth. As Owen stated, the BFCCPS Gar Community Garden is a legacy project that was started in 2010. My sister, Samantha, was the, one of the creators of the original BFCCPS Community Garden. While watching my sister go through this process, I was inspired by her work and dedication, knowing that the issue of hunger had only has increased over time. I wanted to bring awareness to the community on this issue, and what better way to continue the work started by my sister in 2010. I joined forces with Owen. With the help of, and dedication of Ms. Schwab, we began our journey. Continuing the successful work of the many students before us was a giant undertaking. We knew that the garden needed, to, needed help and the BFCCPS community and the Franklin Food Pantry would appreciate it if we fixed up the planting beds, planted many vegetables, and had a successful harvest. However, the summer is a tough time to stick to a schedule and any missteps would mean disaster for our project. Owen and I struggled the first couple weeks contacting Ms. Schwab who is in charge of the garden. We were able to talk to her about her plans back in February of 2014. Our next couple months, Owen and I met with each other and talked about what we wanted to do. We both agreed that we needed two new garden beds because the others were falling apart. But that would only have to wait until we, after our first planting. Owen and I chose to plant lettuce, carrots, carrots radishes, onions, potatoes, squash, peas, green beans, and some herbs. Caring for the garden meant watering and weeding on a regular basis. One obstacle we encountered was a broken hose nozzle, and at one time the nozzle wasn't even on the hose. Weeding in the hot weather was also another obstacle. Our first crops were ready to be picked and delivered to the food pantry in June. We then planted potatoes in the fall, and once all the spring and summer vegetables had grown and were picked. Once the fall potatoes were harvested and we were finished with the garden for the year, it was time to build the two new beds. Moving the dirt and shoveling it from the old beds to the new beds was hard work, but we persevered. To end our capstone project, we also sponsored a school-wide Canada drive in November. 
The generous BFCCPS community donated over 488 pounds of canned goods to the Franklin Food Pantry, which rarely helps during the holidays. We would like to thank Coach Burke, Mrs. Moreau, our advisors, for guiding us through the whole capstone process, Mrs. Schwab, for giving us excellent advice on what to plant and how to plant. And we would also like to thank you, thank our parents for, con for helping us to construct the new garden beds. Nareesh Ramesh for helping us collect hundreds of canned goods and the BFCC can, BFCCPS can drive and the BFCCPS students and families who donated canned goods. Finally, we would like to give a special thanks to Mrs. Weiss in the Franklin Food Pantry for all their hard work in providing food to local families who need it most. If we have any tips for the upcoming 8th graders, it would be choose a project that you know you will have fun with. It is no fun if you cannot enjoy your capstone project. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Sam Gilberti, who is going to discuss um, his work with the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Hello, students, parents, and faculty members of BFCCPS. My name is Sam Gilberti, and for my capstone, I decided to raise money and volunteer time to fight multiple sclerosis, or MS. When it came time to choose a cause for MS, I, for capstone, I immediately knew that I wanted to fight MS. The fact that over 600,000 people in the U.S. suffered from multiple sclerosis astounded me, and I wanted to do something about it. MS affects me every day because my father has MS, as did my grandfather. The charity that I worked with to fight MS was the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. When I asked them how I could help, they said I should donate money and participate in a walk. I decided to participate in the walk on April 26, 2014. For the walk, I set my fundraising goal at $500. I set up a webpage where people could donate, and I asked family and friends to contribute to my cause. The response that I got was overwhelming. In the end, I ended up raising about $1,600, which was three times the amount that I thought I was going to fundraise. The walk was located at Boston University and was three and a half miles long. There was at least 500 people at this walk. Towards the end of this walk, I saw Mr. Callahan, who was walking for his brother-in-law's brother. It was so good to see so many people dedicating their time and effort towards this cause. The National MS Society also asked me to volunteer at a bike ride for MS in June. I originally wanted to volunteer for walk in September, but the National MS Society needed some help for the June bike ride because they were low on volunteers. The June bike ride went from UMass Boston to Cape Cod and was from June 28th to June 29th. On the first day, I was stationed at Mass Maritime. I unloaded luggage from a truck and directed bikers towards their luggage. There were even more people at the bike ride than there were at the walk. On the first day, I worked alongside about a dozen Boy Scouts. On the second day, I was stationed at UMass Boston. I unloaded bikes from a truck and put them on a bike rack. On the second day, I volunteered alongside 15 inmates from Suffolk County Prison. Despite being in prison, they were really helpful. I had a great time volunteering at the bike ride. It was great to see so many people coming together for such a great cause. After I had volunteered at the bike ride and participated in the walk, my next task was to educate the community. I accomplished this on October 3rd by presenting a video at an assembly. This assembly had 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grades present. Before I show the video, I explained why I chose MS. The video explained the causes and the symptoms of MS. I thought this was a great way to spread awareness about MS to my school community and to connect my fundraising efforts with my peers. In my capstone experience, I encountered one obstacle. I was originally going to volunteer at a 50 mile challenge walk in September. However, at the last minute, the National MS Society asked me if I could volunteer at the bike ride in June because they didn't have enough volunteers. Because of my experiences in capstone, I know I helped a ton of people with MS. With all the money I raised, I know that I not only helped the researchers who were looking for a cure to MS, but I also helped support people who currently have MS. 
I was able to help support people who currently have, who are currently in physical therapy groups, support groups, and wellness programs. I also know that I'll be walking again for MS this year to help support my brother's capstone, who is who he, he is fighting for MS. I'd like to thank my mom for using her free time to help drive me places and help me volunteer. I'd like to thank Mrs. Moreau who helped make sure I had everything for my capstone deadline. I'd like to thank my advisor group who supported me through the capstone process. I'd like to thank Brenda Barber, who is my contact for the National MS Society. She helped coordinate my volunteer dates and the walk that I participated in. I'd like to thank Mr. Perna, who let me present at the assembly in October. And I'd like to thank Ms. Sonowski, who approved my project. And finally, I would like to thank everyone who donated, because my capstone wouldn't be a success without them. Thank you all for listening. Next, I invite Spencer Jolie to come up and discuss his work with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Hello students, parents, and faculty of BFCCPS. My name is Spencer Jolie and I would like to share my experience on my capstone that I did with cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis, or as it is commonly called CF, is a genetic chronic lung disease of the lungs and digestive system. This causes the body to produce extremely thick, sticky mucus. CF affects approximately 70,000 people worldwide and 30,000 of them live in the U.S. today. The mucus caused by CF clogs a person's lungs, leading to life-threatening lung infections. It prevents the body from breaking down food properly to absorb nutrients. This means that people with CF often can't exert themselves very strenuously and they experience poor bodily growth. In the 1950s, children born with CF often didn't even make it to elementary school age, but now with the CF uh, for Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, they have been treating CF and people can expect to live to their 30s and 40s. I decided pretty quickly that I wanted to focus my capstone project on raising money for CF research and raising awareness. This is mostly because I know the most fun, outgoing, and courageous woman that, and mother of two of my friends who unfortunately has CF. This is my mom's friend, Mary Jo. She tries not to let her CF slow her down, but I know it means hooking herself up to a machine for a couple attempts a day and not being able to exert herself very strenuously for long periods of time. I have known Mary Jo since I was a baby, and in fact, I have participated in CF walks now for four years. I cannot imagine not being able to run down a lacrosse field or being able to get up repeatedly on the side of the mountain when I snowboard. I also can't imagine someday having to worry about passing on this terrible disease to a child, and anything I can do to help with the CF research seems really good to me. The first step of my action plan was to participate in the 2014 Great Strides Walk at the South Loop Zoo. I did that last year on a warm, sunny day on Saturday. You know that each team probably has a member with CF as a part of it, but the event is still a happy one. You know by looking, there's usually someone on each team who has CF, and, but they are still all happy and walking and laughing together. I obtained many sponsors for my walk, so that at the end of the day, I knew I had raised $500. In May, I organized a Jeans for Jeans Day at BFCCPS. Students were allowed to wear jeans if they contributed $1 to fight the genetic disease. To bring awareness to kids in younger grades who didn't really know much about CF, I visited their classrooms to give them basic facts about it and an opportunity to ask me about questions about what CF is. As you probably know, BFCCPS students are always eager to wear jeans and I was able to raise an additional $172 that day. Each student who participated received a special Jeans for Jeans sticker and it was nice to see them on shirts of many students throughout the day. I still felt, though, that it would be really good to try to bring more awareness to kids of what I could do to help them see what it would really be like to live with CF. So after brainstorming with Mary Jo, I asked our coaches if I could do some PE time in the 5th and 8th grades. Students were asked to do 20 jumping jacks, and then they were asked to repeat the exercise, but this time with only a milkshake started to breathe through. This would help them experience a limited lung capacity. Then I turned up the heat by having them do 20 jumping jacks, breathing only through small milk straws. An obstacle I encountered was having my peers actually take this activity seriously. But those that did take it seriously definitely experienced a difference in their ability to breathe freely and probably got some small sense of what it's like to live with CF. 
Did everything go smoothly through my project? No, I didn't. In the first uh, three steps of the project, I lost everything and had to redo everything again. So now I vow to keep all important project papers together in one place. <laughs> Did I follow through with my action plan? Again, no, I didn't. I hope to arrange with Mary Jo to come to BFCCPS to share her personal experience and difficulties with the community. That has not happened, but I am hoping my advising group will welcome her to one of my advising group meetings at the end of the year. That, that will, I hope, in significantly increase the amount of knowledge that people will have about CF. Also, as far as my action plan is concerned, I realized that I was a little unrealistic to expect to walk into a local chapter of the CF Foundation in Natick to volunteer my services as a 13-year-old. But I am very proud of what I was able to accomplish. I plan to continue to walk into Great Strides Walk every year and when it makes sense to tell people about what CF is. I hope that it won't be too long before CF is secure and not just treated. There's a few people who I would like to thank. First off, one of them being my mom and dad for driving me around and helping me to find sponsors in many other ways than I could probably think of and for their love and support. I also want to thank Mary Jo for brainstorming with me and being a wonderful role model of optimism and perseverance. I'd like to thank Mrs. Moreau for patience and assistance in redoing the first three steps with me. I want to thank my advising group for the moral support and helping me get through the process. I'd also like to thank the coaches for allowing me to use their PE time to do my demonstration. And finally, I'd like to thank Mrs. Zolanowski and Mr. Perno for allowing me to do the Jeans Day. Thank you very much and hopefully you some guys in the comments. Invite Amy Keeglin up to discuss her work that she did with the Baypath Humane Society of Hopkinton. Amy, come on up. Welcome, students and faculty of BFCCPS. My name is Amy Keglin, and for my capstone project, I decided to work with the Baypath Humane Society of Hopkinton. I decided to work with Baypath because when one of my cats ran away five years ago, I vowed to help other animals, specifically dogs and cats that were lost or abandoned. My mom also volunteered there in her spare time, and she would bring home stores of different dogs and cats that were there, specifically, such as Dino's, a dog that was abused and had gasoline pour out his eyes, resulting in permanent blindness. There were three main parts to my project. First, I held a popsicle sale with two friends, Malika and Molly, from June, 18th, from June 19th to June 21st during recess. We handed out flyers and talked to each classroom. And during that sale, we each made around $25, which was $135 in total. Next, I volunteered at Baypath from November 9th to November 23rd for an hour a week. Since the dog had to be locked up in kennels, I played with the cats and got them used to being around people. And finally, I held a donation drive the month of November. For each grade, for each grade I assigned a different items to control food allergies and the amount of each item, such as cat food, dog treats, toys, etc. At the end of the drive, I awarded a prize to the class that brought the most donations, which was Mrs. Finley's group classroom, and picked up all the donations collectively the day before Thanksgiving break. During that drive, I collected around about 100 donations, which was my goal. That same day, my mom and I loaded up the car and dropped off the donations at the end. We were really happy to see all the items I had collected to help all the cats and dogs. From the start, I had a lot of problems. From the beginning and middle of the process, my goals kept changing. I had planned to do an assembly and bring in a representative to talk about Baypath, but that never happened. My second problem was with the popsicle sale. We didn't know how many popsicles to buy, and we ended up buying 200 popsicles, and we had 60 popsicles at the end. We saw this quickly, though, by giving ourselves each 20 popsicles for our, ourselves. My second problem was volunteering. I had planned to do my volunteering over the summer, but we were always traveling to either New Hampshire or Cape Cod. I could have done something really committed myself to volunteering, but I procrastinated a lot. Then when school started, it got really busy and I had to put it on my to-do list until things at home and school set it down for me enough for me to go, which was November. Finally, my donation drive was the most problematic. My original plan was to hold a drive during the month of November, but that never happened because there were too many projects during November, so it had to be pushed back to November. Also the drive, I had originally coordinated with some of the faculty to install the boxes in every room. However, this didn't happen in the middle of the month, I still didn't have any boxes. So I emailed Mrs. Schwab and she let me use the school's green bins to do the drive for the remaining two weeks. 
She agreed, and I sent out an email to all the teachers telling them about the change. I had many positive outcomes that resulted from my project. First, I educated the school and family and friends of animal abuse and abandonment. I did this by giving out say, say, flyers, announcing my possible sale, and donating them that contained information about BayPath and their mission to help save abandoned and abused animals. Um, next, I helped BayPath by donating time and money to help them, as they rely solely on donations of volunteers. I played with the cats and got them more used to people coming in and playing with them, especially the kitchen. Socializing with animals is more is important because it makes them more prone to be adoptable, to be adopted. Finally, I learned more about myself and my passion for animals, especially the cats, because no cat or dog deserves to be abandoned or abused because it's not their fault. I wanted to express that message beyond what I did for Capstone. There were a lot of people who helped and supported me throughout the Capstone process. First, my mom, who drove me everywhere and gave me advice about what to do when something was, wasn't working out. Next, my best friend Molly, who probably put put everything together for my project. So Popsicle failed to volunteering with me to help me empty the bins and making the prize. I wouldn't have finished if he didn't help me. I would like to thank my contact at Baycat, Naomi Covino, for letting me come in and play in with the cats when I wanted to. My advisor, Mrs. Moreau, deserves a lot of thanks, mostly for helping me rearrange my schedule when a plan wasn't working out, and for supporting our entire advising group for the year we were given the papers. Finally, I was to thank Mrs. Schwab for letting me use the bins for our capstone pro project at last minute and emailing me during my her vacation to give me the go-ahead. I hope you all enjoyed my presentation and thank you for listening. Great job, Amy. Next, I invite Sophie Chris and Mahina Majendi to come up and discuss the issue of homelessness. of NCCPS. My name is Sophie Kripp and my name is Mihita Mudati and for our capstone project we address the issue of homelessness. It is estimated that approximately 3.5 million people in the U.S. are affected by homelessness. Furthermore, one out of 50 or about 1.5 million American children become homeless each year. This issue just seemed too big to be ignored. As you may know, my family is from India. There, there are almost 300 million people living in poverty or are homeless. In my recent travels there, I've noticed much has changed. Fortunately, there are not as many families and children living in the streets anymore. Although times are changing, this issue still remains in India and all over the world. Mahita and I wanted to do our best to help in any way we could. We hope to educate our school community on the issue of homelessness by reading a book about it to the lower grades. We also volunteered hours at a homeless shelter in our area, since homelessness is an issue that affects families locally as well as worldwide. Choosing to read the book, the the book, The Lady in the Box by Anne McGovern, was the way Sophie and I decided to do our outreach part of our project. We felt we needed the kids to know that others are not as fortunate as we are. We came into each classroom at the time that the teacher had signed up for and read the book, talked about our project, and asked them questions about homelessness. We asked them questions such as, have you ever seen people living in boxes under bridges or on the streets? How does seeing people like this make you feel? What can you do to help someone while staying safe? We also asked them questions about their home, like what is your favorite part of your home? What would you miss if you had to move? Asking kids these questions really got them thinking about what they can do to help people in their towns. Lots of kids gave great answers and had great ideas on the topic. This was the first step of our project that we completed throughout the month of May. The second part of our project was volunteering at the shelter itself. It was a small homeless shelter in Medway, Massachusetts called the Medway House. This shelter is home to 12 families who will stay there for an average of 6 to 12 months. Most of the adults living there are single parents with young children. And as you can imagine, living with many families with young children can be hard, especially in small living. Our dogs were to play with the kids and let the parents have a break. On our first day volunteering there, we were nervous to see how the kids would react to complete strangers playing with them. But they always wore a smile on our face every time we saw them. We would walk in every day after that feeling more confident than the first. We would take the kids and play with them, doing whatever they wanted. This mostly consisted of going outside on their small playground or playing with them indoors. We completed over 20 hours of time over the summer, but towards the end of the summer, we were busier and had other things going on and spent less time at the shelter. This was a difficult transition since we had become so used to volunteering two hours every day there. By the end of volunteering, we had volunteered 24 hours, surpassing our goal of 20 hours. We had made relationships with the families and the kids there, so it was hard for us to leave. 
Sophie and I are looking forward to going back sometime soon. The last part of this project was creating a small bulletin board for the 7th and 8th grade hallway with some information on our project and some photos of the shelter. You may recognize some of the same photos on the slideshow. We faced an obstacle that many other projects did not though. This major obstacle was finding a shelter to work at. Many shelters do not let kids under the age of 16 volunteer, and even if they did, they did not get back to us on time. We made contact with one shelter, and they started emailing us informa information about volunteering there. We thought that it was going to work out and that we had everything secured, but they, st they soon stopped responding. We called them, and they told us that the woman previously working there did not work there anymore. We then got the email of the new lady working there. She told us that we could not volunteer without getting background checks. So the Friday before school ended, we had to find a new shelter, call them, and get approved all before the last day of school. This was the hardest part of our life. This project had really made an impact on Mahisa and I. We had learned so much about homelessness and how many people right near us are affected by it. We also made connections with the people at the shelter, so it was really hard saying goodbye on our last day. I had looked forward to seeing the kids at the shelter every day throughout the summer. This project seemed a lot less like schoolwork and more like fun when we were volunteering there. We would like to thank those who have also been involved with our capstone project. Thank you to our parents for driving us to the shelter and helping us manage the kids there. Thank you to the director, Haisia, who helped us figure out when we could come in and what we could do to help. Thank you to Mrs. Moreau for guiding us through the process and helping us every step of the way. Also, thank you to our advisory group helping us and decide how to better our project. And last but not least, thank you to Mrs. Lonofsky and Mr. Glennock for helping us make our project the best we could be. Thank you for listening. Next, I would like to introduce Malika McSudi. Um, she uh, tackled the issue of childhood cancer and worked with Boston uh, Children's Hospital.
I was, I was feeling very accomplished because not only did I walk seven miles, but half my caption was completed successfully and I had raised awareness to people around Boston when they would look at us when we were walking. My next step, my next step was to fundraise at least $150. I held, I held two fundraisers, one here at the school and the other one at my neighborhood. The first fundraiser I held was done in May. I made pastries at home and then went around my neighborhood and sold them, and sold them for each for $2. While I was walking around selling the pastries, I told them about the children's hospital, what my project was, and why it's important they buy the pastries. In this fundraiser, I made $140. The second fundraiser I did was in June, two weeks before school let out for the summer. I had a popsicle sale for grades three through eight, and I had help from Molly and Amy. Each popsicle was sold for a dollar. In this fundraiser, we made over $135, and we split the money in three, and each took home $45. To tell kids why we were having a popsicle sale, we made flyers that we hung up around the school that explained what each of our projects were, where the money is going towards, and, and why they should buy the popsicles. We also advertised the sale in the pink sheet so the parents would know. Counting the money from my previous fundraiser, I had gotten $185 in total. Now, all I had to do was sew pills to complete my capstone. After gathering the materials with my mom, I invited some friends over in November to help me sew it. During the night, there were little problems, but getting pricked by me because none of us were very experienced. Also, it took a while to measure and cut the fabric out, and we would get distracted by each other from time to time. But in the end, we made 20 pillows. Then, right before Christmas, my mom and I took the train to Boston to deliver them. I had arranged to meet up with Lacey at the main lobby, and, then she, and she would then take the pillows and distribute them to cancer patients. I couldn't, I couldn't, dis I would have liked to distribute the pillows, but I couldn't because, um, of the, because I, because, um, they wouldn't let me. One obstacle I faced was managing my time. I had homework, after school activities, and capstone to think about, which did overwhelm me at times. It was also hard to find the time to drop the pillows off because my mom, Lacey, and I had to be free. I overcame these problems by talking it out with my mom and my advisor. They helped me arrange my schedule to fit capstone with everything else. Another obstacle I faced was last January when I couldn't find a project to do and started to panic a little. My first choice of project had been to raise awareness for abused animals but I couldn't find an organization that wanted my help because all of them refused my help since I was too young to volunteer. So then, after talking with Ms. Moreau, I changed my project to helping kids with cancer. Finally, <clears throat> finally, by completing this project, I know that I succeeded in my goals and learned along the way, which was a positive result. I, know, I now know the meaning of capstone and know I'm one step ahead of where I was yesterday. To conclude, I'd like to thank my mom for guiding me with touring to be an actively participating in my capstone, my dad for pushing me to do my work, without him I might not, I might not have gotten everything done on time, Lacey for supporting and helping me through, Mrs. Moreau, my advisor, for helping me figure things out and being patient at times, my advising group, Samiha, Mikita, Emma, Alana, Satya, Haima, Chrissy, Mary, Amy, and Molly for being there to make my project complete, and thank you for listening. Project, I chose to paint murals in the four main hallways to help prevent bullying. When a child bullies, it is often because he or she doesn't feel happy, and seeing another person more miserable than them makes them feel better. Thinking about what I wanted to do years before I even started the capstone process, yes, even though they say to forget any previous ideas, I was a rebel, I remember how much more positive I felt and still did feel while walking through the basement of the school with all the colorful murals, and so I had practically my entire capstone planned out in my head a year before we were introduced to step one. My main goal was to combine my interests and the topic I'm passionate about while leaving a mark. The experiences of a few close friends being the victim of bullying is what drove my passion to address this very difficult subject. I have friends who are some of the most amazing, talented, and inspirational people you will ever meet, that I have serious depression, anxiety, self-esteem issues, and have even com contemplated suicide because of bullying. These are all very real effects of bullying, and no one should have to deal with them. So how to connect my drive to my interests? In order to stop individuals from bullying, you have to find ways to improve the demeanor of the unhappy individu individual. And so my solution was to help lift the atmosphere of the four main hallways where students spend most of their time by painting murals, as I love drawing and painting. I decided to have three main parts to my capstone. 
a student contest to determine the mural designs, having volunteers help paint the murals, and holding a fundraiser to help pay for the costs. Through my project, I hope to spread the word that a positive attitude and atmosphere can really impact the students of the school. I tried to incorporate educating my community in as many ways as possible. I held the contest with the help of Ms. Wolf, making flyers with information about the contest, my capstone, and filet to hand out to the students and put in the pink sheet. There were flyers in the art room for anybody who wanted to participate, and I also went around to several classrooms. I could have been more organized when I did this. I visited the classrooms with one of my fellow advisees, Molly Bogner, and then I announced at the end of the day, which is very stressful and hectic, and I'm sincerely sorry for every teacher whose class I went to. I also announced my painting day in the pink sheet, though with the response I got, I don't think too many people actually paid attention to the flyer. Finally, I educated people during my fundraiser. I encountered many obstacles. First, as overused as it is, is my own procrastination. I'm probably the queen of procrastination this year, as I did not meet a single one of my deadlines, and I actually had to receive an extension from Mr. Perna to keep working through December. I originally planned to have the contest in May. It was held in June. I procrastinated until the very last minute, panicked over a weekend, and had the contest running with the following Monday with three weeks of school left, announcing the winners on the last day of school. I was supposed to have my fundraiser completed by the end of the May. I had it the week of December 15th. I believe this actually helped my fundraiser, however. I sold origami Christmas ornaments and bookmarks, and I do not think they would have been as popular had it been not close to the holidays. It was another obstacle just to try to make as many ornaments to meet the demand. Finally, the actual painting of the murals was going to take place over the summer. This, of course, did not happen. Since I rushed the contest, of, rushed the contest at the end of the year, I did not have any time to redesign the winning designs as needed and get them approved. And I ended up doing that over the summer. I then continued to procrastinate the painting of the murals over the new school year. To solve this, I held a painting day at the River <coughs> Schoolhouse on December 13th. In retrospect, I should have made more announcements than just a pink sheet, as only three total people, Catherine McAllister, Brenda Vinga Traumann, and Brenda's mom came, and I'm 99% sure that's because I was constantly pestering them and reminding them throughout the week before. Molly also helped paint, but as she couldn't make it to the event, she took the mural she designed home to finish it. Another obstacle I faced was having to do with the murals themselves. Since we had to comply with the fire code and we knew the school might be moving buildings soon, I had to make a choice with Mr. Perna about how we were going to paint and potentially hang the murals. After delivering both screws and plywood, we decided to use hardboard as a base and hang the murals on the wall with museum putty. This way, when the school moves, the murals could be easily taken down and moved. Then came another challenge. The museum putty failed me, several of the murals fell down, and I had to take all of them home over winter break to repair any damage. My dad then came up with a way to use command strips and hooks to hang the murals more securely and add metal corner protectors to the larger murals. We then put the murals back up after winter break and they have been there since. After working through all the challenges I faced, I would consider my capstone to be a success. It seems that many people are noticing the murals I have received. I have received numerous com compliments and I would like to say that they are cheering up people. I also learned a lot, that I really need to work on my time management and that everything that can go wrong will go wrong. I'd like to thank my parents for supporting me, helping me come up with my capstone in the first place, and helping me problem solve. My friends Molly, Amy, Brenda, and Catherine for helping me out with painting, designs, flyers, and just ge generally supporting me. Catherine for helping out with my fundraiser. My advising group for supporting me and helping me come up with solutions for problems. Mrs. Moreau for helping me through the capstone process and for pushing me and being worried about me. If it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be presenting right now. Mr. Perna for being helpful and open as we tried to work through all the regulations my project involved and my procrastination. Ms. Wolf for help with the contest and letting me use the art room paintbrushes. Everyone who painted, aka my mom, Brenda's mom, Catherine, Molly, and Brenda. Everyone who submitted a mural design regardless whether or not theirs was chosen and everybody who supported my capstone through my fundraiser. Thank you for listening and have a nice day. group to please stand up so we can recognize them as a group piece. Um, Coach Burke is also one of our eighth grade advisors and while her entire group is going tomorrow we do have one student that will be presenting today. So Coach Burke would you like to come up? Good morning. Um, as Mrs. Olnowski said, my group will be presenting tomorrow. 
Um, first, congratulations, Owen, you did a great job. He's another one of my students that presented today already. Um, and I have another student in my group going today, Sky DaCosta. He's going to share his project with you. He did it um, on literacy and worked with the Bellingham Library. Come on up, Sky. Hello, families of BSCCPS. I am an anchor at the school named Sky DaCosta, and I call my capstone project Literacy Through Libraries. My capstone was supportive of literacy and libraries both. Literacy is the ability to read and illiteracy is the inability to read. I chose this project because I like to read and I feel that everyone should be able to do so. Also, the local libraries have had their funding cut back recently and have cut back on their hours and services. For example, the, <clears throat> the Franklin Library is closed on Sundays and now closed early on Fridays. They could use some help, so I decided to volunteer at the Bellingham Library, sell bookmarks for fundraising, and collect books for book sales. I educated others by putting blurbs on the back of the bookmarks I sold. Some of the things they say in the blurb were the definition of illiteracy, and that illiteracy can get in the way of, an important, of important daily situations, such as having a well-paying job or preparing a healthy meal. Also, when I made my first sale, I announced the information three times before when explaining the sale. One of the major problems that I faced is that I originally wanted to work with the Franklin Library. However, when I tried to contact them multiple times, I found that I was unable to contact the person I was supposed to contact, and I believe it was because they had to leave before school hours ended. So I ended up having to go to the Bellingham Library and volunteer there, but I was able to quickly set up a time once I switched over. Another problem was that my original action plan didn't actually get approved, but I was able to work, rework it with Mr. Perner and get it passed the second time. And a third problem was that when I, I was having trouble figuring out just how to print the bookmarks I made, and even when I did, I ended up having a lot less than I thought I was going to. And the fourth problem is that I procrastinated and everyone knows how that works. Um, the capstone that I did was not really that complicated, but it did have benefits to the Bellingham Library. The major one is that I managed to do 14 hours of volunteer time, and if you want a monetary term, that's $112 at, at the Massachusetts minimum wage. Um, I mostly helped reorganize the comics and DVD and CD sections. And I also tried to raise money through selling bookmarks, but I haven't sold a large amount yet. The, I did end up collecting some books from the Bellingham Library and from my own family, which we donated to the Franklin Library. Um, one thing that, we learned, that I learned about my issue was how much trouble the libraries have been in recently. I hadn't actually noticed at first when the Franklin Library cut its staff in half, but I did notice when they had to close the second floor desk. And when I volunteered at the library, the what I did for like half of my time was I um, I helped the young adult librarian in deciding what to keep, get, and get rid of in the comics section. And <clears throat> What I learned about myself is that I really just can't focus on large projects. I'm noticing part of that is applying right now. And so thanks to my parents for helping me to stay on task and getting me to my volunteer hours on time. My advisor, Coach Berg, for helping me with my ideas. Mr. Perner for working out my step four action plan into something reasonable the young adult librarian at the Bellingham Library, and everyone here was, was bought one of the bookmarks they sold. Great job, Sky. Thank you very much. Um, now I would like to call up our last advising group for today. Mr. Belke has been an advisor with us since he started here, and this is his second time going through the capstone experience. He has also been with his group since sixth grade. Thank you, Mr. Belke. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
My group is about to present uh, to you this morning, uh, and I am truly amazed um, and extremely proud of each individual that you're about to hear from. And I can sit up here and speak on and on and on about what they did, but I would like them to do it for me. So uh, the first individual that you're going to hear from today is Andrew Bremser and his fight against leukemia. Parents and faculty of BFCCPS. My name is Andrew Bremser, and for my capstone project, I decided to work with the Ben Ebert Laboratory to help fight leukemia. So, what is leukemia? Leukemia is a cancer of blood cells that begins in the place where the blood cells are produced. Leukemia cells will create more bad white blood cells, which prevent the good white blood cells from fighting infections in your body. The cause of leukemia is unknown, but scientists are focusing on finding the cure for leukemia. I felt that working with leukemia was a good project choice for me because I was connected to leukemia. My grandfather died of acute leukemia, the most serious form of leukemia, before I was born. First, I would need the panel to approve my project. Unfortunately, the panel told me I was a little off track, so I received the yellow light. After fixing up my action plan, I found a date to visit the Ben Ebert Laboratory in Boston. On my first visit, I discussed with Dr. Ben Ebert what I would want to do to raise awareness for leukemia and funds for the lab. I looked at leukemia cells under a microscope, and I would have to find the infected cells. I also helped the laboratory staff do a few small chores to make their work easier. Overall, my first visit to the lab was a success. The next step I took to complete my project was to bring the speaker. Initially, I wanted to hand out flyers, but I realized most kids would not pay attention to the flyers. So I brought in the speaker instead. Unfortunately, Dr. Ebert was busy, so instead I brought in my uncle. For the past 25 years, my uncle has hosted a nonprofit golf tournament called Marjo, raising almost $250,000 for the Ben Ebert Laboratory. Over the past few years, I have helped out the tournament by running the putting contest. Anyways, my uncle came in to speak to grades 5 through 7 at an assembly about leukemia. He explained its causes, effects, and how you can help. I felt that this helped educate the community about leukemia and that this was also a success. After raising awareness to the community, I decided to hold a fundraiser because the Ben Ebert Laboratory told me how tough funding was. They told me it takes the government at least six to 12 months to respond to the request and even longer to fill it. So for the first two weeks in October, I held a competitive fundraiser called Penny Wars. On the first day of the fundraiser, I raised a grand total of 11 cents. Even though I did expect the kids to forget over the weekend, I was expecting more than 11 cents to help me reach my goal of raising $200. Luckily, things changed. At the end of the first week, I raised $500.24 for the Ebert Laboratory. I had already passed my goal, and I still had another week to go. The second week of fundraising was even more successful. I had to bring in overflow containers for many of the classes, and these containers were a reasonable size. At the end of both weeks, I raised a grand total of $1,660.18 for the Ben Ebert Laboratory, Mrs. Barch's class in the morning. Throughout my capstone process, project, I faced many obstacles. One obstacle was receiving the yellow light from the panel. I had to revise my action plan slightly, which set me back. Another obstacle I faced was not finding t-shirts cheap enough to sell. This made me revise my fundraising plan. The last major obstacle I faced was finding a way to carry about 200 pounds of coins and dollars upstairs at the end of each week. It was tough carrying the containers without filling them. My capstone project had many positive results. Most importantly, I raised awareness within my local community. Multiple newspapers wrote an article on my caption project, such as the Milford Daily News and, even, and the Big Brigham and Women's Hospital. This helped spread even more awareness to my community. I raised $1,660.18 for leukemia research. I helped running a putting contest, which raises money for leukemia, and the best part was that I surpassed all of my goals. I would like to thank the following people for making my project successful. Mr. Velpe, my advisor, for guiding me through the process. My advisor group for giving me ideas on my project. My parents and my brother for supporting me through the capstone process. Uncle Mark for helping me for speaking grades five through seven at an assembly and allowing me to help at Marja. Dr. Ben, Damian, and the Ben Ebert Laboratory staff for allowing me to visit the lab and help out there. Luke Young for helping me fundraise at lunch. Mrs. Serapis and Mr. Marku for helping quiet down the younger kids at lunch and for locking up the containers each night. Mrs. Barch's class for donating the most money to my capstone pro for my, to my fundraiser and everyone else who donates to my capstone project. You made a big success. Thanks for listening.
Nice job, AJ. Uh, our next individual, uh, individual that you will hear from is Ryan Kenneret and his uh, raising of environmental awareness. students, faculty, and parents of the BFCCPS community. My name is Ryan Gallaret, and I will be sharing you my capstone with you my capstone experience today. So, for first of all, my project that I did, as you may have known from Mr. Rocky, was I monitored Lake Pearl um, in Rentham for a few factors of, uh, that are toxins in the lake. And the reason I wanted to do this project is because I like to do lake activities, such as water skiing, swimming, etc. And um, but when I first went to the panel to get my project approved, I got the infamous infamous red light. So that really set me back a lot. And I also had to get through the spam filters and the red light again. So. Um, yeah, after I got through and made contact with the um, with the Brentham Board of Health, I I was able to start my project because I got a green light after my second try, and um, then so after I got the green light, I started to uh, go out and monitor. And on the picture, you see the red dots are at each spot that I monitored. And I like to. I wanted to monitor three different spots to get um, to get uh, diverse measurements, um, such as the, for example, the spot in the middle of the lake between the two islands would be the control to get like more unaffected readings in the lake, and so yeah, and then. So after I completed monitoring, I took in all kinds of all of my data and put it in a um, inventory that I presented to the Rentham Board of Health. And I did this to also educate them about what would happen if, yeah. And as you can see, you can see me presenting and also taking readings. And there's also a chart from my readings in you can tell that um, it, there was a drought happening, so I got some pretty interesting readings. And yeah, during the course of my project, I learned a few things. The first thing that I learned that is you can't assume things because they're pretty much bound to come, come true if you think they're not going to happen. Um, and two, don't put off things onto tomorrow because I did this so much. I, I, would, I wanted to start monitoring in June and I didn't start monitoring until September. And my only, the only way I started was my dad dragging me out of bed. <laughs> and so my last obstacle um, was the uh, spam filter, which is now on my list of least favorite things. And I got around this from by using my mother's email account. And <coughs> yeah. over the course of the project, many people, um, well, actually first, uh, the positive outcome that I had was educating the Board of Health and getting healthy readings from the lake. And lastly, I would like to thank a, a few people, my mom and my dad, for encouraging me and rowing me all the way out to the lake. Um, my advising group for encouraging and me and helping me. The Rental Board of Health for letting me do the project. My brother and my sister for not really bothering me too much. My grandfather for giving me good advice. Rental Police for, uh, you know, not arresting me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Perna, Mrs. Omnowski, and Mr. Peter for accepting my project. And the last person that I'd like to thank is Mr. Belke, because he helped me a lot over this. The course of the
Ryan. That's probably the best thank you that an advisor has ever had for a capstone. Thank you. Um, on a serious note, our next presenter um, is Kaylin Frangillo, and she is going to speak to you on behalf of her work with the Franklin Seniors.
Mr. Velke helped me come up with the idea of doing my own walk instead. This seemed pretty difficult, but I had few options in no time. I talked with Mr. Callahan about how to get permission from the town to host a walk on the common. After completing this process and receiving approval, I met with Mr. Perna, and we discussed a date that I could present my idea to the school. I donated the money earned from the walk to the Kids Cancer Buzz Off organization, which buzzes the heads of volunteers to show their support for those suffering from cancer. <coughs> Months later, I finally heard back from the Susan G. Com Susan G. Komen, and they offered me a position to volunteer at their upcoming walk. I was very pleased and accepted. I chose, I chose to help cancer patients because I have relatives and family friends who have been affected by this disease. They were my inspiration for this project. Part of the assignment was to educate my community. I did this in several ways. My mom offered to post a notice on Facebook. This allowed people from all over to be aware of my plans. Another way I spread the word was when I presented a video and a speech before an assembly. Within this presentation, I explained how they, the students, could get involved. I then put flyers around the school to remind them about the walk and what the Kids Cancer Buzz Off organization's intentions were. And I sent out many emails telling more people about what I was doing. Throughout this project, I faced several obstacles and setbacks. On the day of my walk, the fifth and sixth grade classes were coming back from nature's classroom. Rem I remembered returning from nature's classroom when I was in fifth and sixth grade, feeling completely exhausted, so I expected no fifth or sixth graders to be attending. I overcame this problem by speaking to them and giving flyers to them before they left so that they were notified of what was happening and that they were welcome to come. Also on the day of the walk, it rained. Unfortunately, not a lot of people wanted to walk outside in their rain. However, I'm very grateful to those who did come out and support me. The last problem I faced was when I received no response from Susan G. Komen for several months. I eventually just moved on to a new organization but remained available to them. I did have many obstacles, but I had overall positive results. For one, I received $76 through fundraisers and in donations. This helped the Kids Cancer Buzz Off organization with their hopes for the future. Also, I completed my revised goals, the goals that I made after hearing about the Kids Cancer Buzz Off organization, and was offered a position for the Susan G. Komen. It was my original goal to volunteer at Susan G. Komen, and not hearing from them for a long time made me wonder if I was going to be able to. Completing this project, I learned many things. I learned that small actions can make a big difference. All I did was host one walk, just three hours, and I raised $76. This money can go towards the needed subject that requires financial assistance. I also learned that if you're willing to do good for something or someone, your community, community will support you in many ways. After I advertised my plans, I was offered money, volunteers, etc. I would not have been able to successfully complete my project without some help. I would like to thank several people who guided and supported me. First, I'd like to thank my mom for helping me stay on track and giving me unique ideas that I would use to make my project better and helping me set up my walk on the common. I would also like to thank my dad for driving me to and from the Susan G. Coleman walk. My advising, my advising group, Kaylin, Regan, Kate, AJ, Anj, and Ryan, who also gave me ideas on how to solve the obstacles that I faced. My advisor, Mr. Velke, who guided me to success, Mr. Perna and Mrs. Lanowski for allowing me the opportunity to help my community. Haley Dion for going room to room with me to pass out flyers and suggesting what information was necessary for me to include when presenting to the class. I would also like to thank Mr. Callahan for helping me with the procedure of reserving the common for an event. I would like to thank the walkers that came out in the rain to support me. I was nervous I was going to have to cancel, but because they showed up, I was able to complete that goal. Thank you for listening. Excellent job, great job. Uh, next up, we are going to hear from Regan Patterson and her promotion of the Random Acts of Kindness. Kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate, and that is why 
why I chose to do this topic. I want a people to experience this feeling, learn that even a simple act can mean everything to someone, and make a difference in people's lives there in the community. Capstones is about being able to change and bring awareness to something that is meaning to you and others. My first goal was to create a successful blog that asked people to perform an act of kindness and then comment on what they did and how it made them feel. After thinking of many ideas that would make people aware of my blog, someone finally gave me the, the idea of creating business cards. I went around town performing acts of kindness, such as putting people's carts away in grocery store parking lots, paying for the person behind me at Dunkin' Donuts, and giving a random person a $15 gift card. Once I performed these acts, I handed one of my business cards to the person I did the generous acts to. The business card had my blog address and explained what I was doing. This didn't only raise awareness for my blog, but it also spread kindness and awareness throughout the community, leading to me completing two of my steps. My third step was to spread awareness in school, so I decided to hold the kindness week. This week allowed students to express themselves and reminded them to be kind to others at all times. For this week, I worked with one of my friends, Shraddha Ayer. Shraddha was holding a day to raise awareness for cyberbullying, so I thought that day could be part of my week as well. After asking Shraddha, we decided to hold Kindness Week October 6th through October 10th. Each day had a different theme. Monday was Wear Blue Day, raising awareness for cyberbullying. Tuesday was Wear Your Heart on Your Tuesday. Each student would receive a purple bracelet and write a personality trait or characteristic that they wanted to be known for. Students wrote characteristics such as friendly, kind, athletic, unique, and many more. Wednesday would be your role model day. Most students wore sports jerseys and dressed as an athlete, but there were also young students dressed as firemen and ballet nuts. Thursday was picture day, and Friday was everyone is different day. On everyone is different day, students wore crazy pants, tutus, and things they wouldn't normally wear. This day allowed the students to show who they really were and that it was okay to be different. <coughs> I believe this week was a huge success. Overall, there were not many obstacles I had to overcome. One of them was creating a blog. I wanted to make it public, but also didn't want people saying anything rude or inappropriate on it. I had to look through the settings a few times and look up how to moderate my comments before I made it public. Also, some people's comments weren't coming through. It took a while to figure out why some comments weren't coming through, but others were. Once I figured this out, everything else ran smoothly. My capstone project didn't only positively affect the community, but it also affected me. It reminds me to always do the right thing and try to be nice to everyone. Overall, 26 people commented on my blog, which was more than my goal. Throughout the process, my project affected many people. One person commented on my blog, a girl in my grade, who I never expected to approach me, came up to me and started talking about how her parents were splitting up. She asked for help and advice. Now we are closer than I ever expected, and whenever she needs help, she comes to talk to me about how she's feeling and asks for advice. Helping her makes me feel good in a way that makes me feel important and needed. Throughout this project, I learned many things, such as how to efficiently work with someone else, how to talk to strangers about my project confidently, and most importantly, remembering to be kind as much as I can. I would like to thank my mom, dad, sister Marley, and Kate Stabley for supporting me throughout the entire process and giving me ideas. Mr. Perna and Mrs. Olnevsky for approving my project and allowing me to hold the kind of week in school. All the students and faculty that participated in kind of week, my advisor, Mr. Belsky, and my advising group for supporting me. Mrs. Pite for helping me set up my blog and coming up with things for each day. Shraddha Aya for letting me work with her during kindness week. And finally, Anna Noon for helping me think of different acts of kindness as we grew around town. And as the Roman philosopher Seneca once said, wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for a kindness. Thank you. Great job, Regan. Uh, our next individual that we're going to hear from is uh, Sakef Sarapali and his work with education. The 
term government funded has a certain hopeful ring to it. The words almost feel synonymous with health and success. This may be true here in another well-funded government, but when the same term is brought to a less privileged country, it turns from happy to unfortunate really quick. The government funds nearly 80% of the schools in India, but because of the poor education levels, around 30% of those kids have to take extra tuition to stay competitive with students from private schools. It is these underfunded schools that my organization Big Help and My Capstone are attempting to aid. My name is Kate Serapoli, and for my capstone, I went through the Big Help Youth Internship Program. What this program entails is a step-by-step -step process that's end goal is to successfully improve the academic conditions in the school in India. In order to achieve this goal, I would do two major things involving the school. The first is to hold academic and athletic activities that would not normally come through their uh, normal curriculum. The other was to raise and donate a sum of money for them to buy themselves a large overall school gift. The reason I chose this project specifically is because I believe that every child deserves access to all types of education and the opportunity to expose themselves to different schools of thought. The actual school I worked with chose what's called the Van Pudu High School, and it was a government-funded school that was in the town my grandmother grew up in. The activities I held all had one specific purpose, which was to expose the kids to a different form of academics. Pictionary required some form of artistic talent, which was not all utilized in the faculty in the school. Debate was surprisingly lar the largest hit among the kids. It forced them to speak to their entire class, which surprisingly only a few students ever did. They truly enjoyed expressing their opinions on the topics they chose, which included topics like the difference in wages between men and women and men and foreign aid. The final and most entertaining activity was dodgeball. Outside activities were a strictly leisurely activity in school, and it gave my students a, a way to stress their limbs during school time. In order to spread awareness about my project, I attempted to reach an audience wider than just our school. My first step in spreading awareness was to send informational emails to friends and family, which led to presentation flyers that were handed out to and given to extended circles. In these presentations, I told them how to donate and what my project was about. My final step to spread awareness was to write an essay and have it posted on the Big Help website to spread awareness to other kids who might want to participate in the, BX and the Big Help Youth Internship Program. The obstacles I faced started off as troubling, but they were conquered and became useful tidbits to express my success. The first and foremost obstacle was the language barrier between me and the kids I worked with. We spoke completely different languages, so in order to overcome this, I practiced their language for months in advance in order to be able, able to hold myself while talking to the kids. Another large obstacle when working with the children was their original unwillingness to speak. It seemed like only three or four kids in class even raised their hand, much less address their entire classroom. In order to change this, I had to make sure everyone knew it was a safe environment and that no idea was incorrect. All these uh, obstacle obstacles became their stepping stones to the ultimate goal, which is to improve the overall school life of these kids I worked with. And I believe I did it. I managed to successfully introduce three new academic ideas to the kids, which, uh, which was to make everyone in the class publicly adjust their class and to donate $450 to the school, which they're using to rebuild a broken wall next to their school. The project was far from a singular effort, and I have many people to thank. This starts off with my parents and sister, who actively gave me useful ideas in order to support me in my overall project. I'd like to thank Mrs. Olmowski and Mr. Perna, who helped me formulate some of the ideas I had for spreading awareness, the Big Help Youth Internship Program, and the people I worked with there. And finally, I'd like to thank my advising group and my advisor, Mr. Velke, for supporting me throughout the process. Good luck to the seventh grade, and thanks for listening. Great job, Kate. Uh, our next student you're going to hear from uh, is Kate Stavely, and she helped support uh, the project. Uh, she helped support project just because. Massachusetts that helps local families in poverty. 
Anyone who needs help can contact the organization and ask for essentials such as back to school supplies, clothes, toiletries, or toys. Project Just Because will then gather these items and have them available for pickup. Throughout the year, they also run multiple programs in addition to their everyday activities, such as the back to school program, the holiday gift program, and the Keep a Family Warm program. After an initial meeting with the office manager to discuss my project, I set dates to volunteer at the warehouse. The first time I went, I learned how the warehouse was organized and the various volunteer activities I would be doing. Volunteers either fill brown paper bags with items the family has asked for or sort through donations and organize with them clothing and shoes. I spent most of my volunteering hours filling the bags with essentials requested by the family. I was told to make sure that every child was given age-appropriate clothes and shoes that a child of their age might like. On one of my visits, I went through baby clothing donations to make sure they met the requirements that were by Project Just Because and organized them by size and gender. Project Just Because is such a great organization that I wanted to spread awareness about all the things they've done to help our community. To do this, I brought friends with me on two occasions so they could see what the organization is like. Another way I spread awareness in my community was by holding a donation drive for children's shoes. After volunteering at the Project Just Because Warehouse, I noticed that many children who had asked for shoes were not able to receive them because of lack of inventory. To help solve this problem, I asked for donations from both the BSCCF community and my friend, and my neighborhood. This drive lasted two weeks and ended up being pretty successful. I was able to donate over 30 pairs of new children's shoes. Like every big project, I encountered a few obstacles along the way. My biggest obstacle was finding time to volunteer. The warehouse was only open three days a week in the summer, so it was difficult to find an appropriate time. After emailing back and forth with my contact at the organization, I solved this problem by volunteering twice in one week. Another obstacle I encountered while finishing my capstone project was spreading awareness about my shoe drive. I printed out flyers to hand to kindergarten through fourth grade but after the first week of the drive, I had only received two pairs of shoes. This may have been because Project Just Because only accepts new shoes for children. I decided to put a notice in the pink sheet and speak to all the classes individually about donating. In the end, these actions paid off, and I was able to receive over 30 pairs of new children's shoes. I think that overall, my project was a success. Before volunteering at Project Just Because, I had no idea how many families in my community were living in poverty. Families asked for basic items that many of us take for granted that they would otherwise not be able to afford. The employees and volunteers at Project Just Because took this very seriously. They made sure to pick out specific, high-quality items that the individual might like. I am very lucky that I got to have these experiences and work with such caring people. I could not have done this project alone, and I would like to thank the following people for helping me throughout the capstone process. My parents for their support, Caitlin Boyles, Abby George, and my sister for volunteering with me. Regan Patterson for helping me pass out flyers. My advisor, Mr. Belfi, and my advisory group. Mrs. Olmeski and Mr. Perna, and everyone who donated to my shoe drive. Thank you for listening and have a good day. student that you're going to hear from from my group uh, and this morning I believe is uh, Mr. Ansh Teradak. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not Teradakko. Uh, <laughs> Terathar? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he worked to promote healthy awareness in uh, children. Many people say that children are the future of a country, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. Kids are the future of any country, and I believe that they need the best resources possible to grow in the best way possible. That said, hello students, parents, and faculty of BFCCPF. My name is Anj Trofter, and welcome to my capstone presentation. For my project, I worked on raising health awareness in kids, and helping out with this really changed me as a person. I worked mostly with the YMCA and a little bit with the Action for Healthy Kids organization. I got the idea to do this project when I was brainstorming at home and I saw a brochure for the YMCA on my table. I read all about the good things they do with, with and for kids and I decided then that's what I wanted to help out with. 
I set three goals for myself when I started the project. I wanted to raise $600 to sponsor two, two youth YMCA membership. I wanted to volunteer 20 hours at the YMCA. And I wanted to set up a wellness committee after school. A wellness committee is basically a group of people that help increase the overall health of a school community. I had three fundraisers in total, two raffle ticket sales and one donation drive. I also set up a donation drive, so my donation page, so my family and friends could donate directly. I held the fundraisers at a 5K run at the school community and accepted donations at the Franklin Farmers Market. I volunteered at the YMCA's youth soccer and t-ball leagues for 20 hours in total. I set up and refereed the games and helped cleaning up at the end. I educated people around me about my project and the cause at a couple of different occasions. At all of the fundraisers I held, I handed out flyers pertaining to my project and detailing what, was, what it was all about. When I contacted healthy food stores for raffle ticket prizes, I told them about my project and how it benefits the community in Franklin. During the process of doing this project, I came across many obstacles. The first obstacle was joining seventh grade halfway through the year. Everyone else had already started their project, so I had to catch up to what I had missed. It took me a while to think of an idea for this project because I hadn't prepared anything in advance. After I got contacts at the organizations I worked with, they stopped communication with me after a while. I waited for a little, but then I found out that they had quit their job. It took me a mile before I got new people to communicate with, and by that time, summer was halfway over. When I wanted to start volunteering, it was, I was told that the background check would only require to let me volunteer would only take about two weeks. It ended up taking two months before I was approved, and I could only start volunteering after the summer had ended. As I started organizing the raffle ticket sales, not many stores applied because they only gave donations to nonprofit organizations. After another month of waiting, I finally got a one Whole Foods gift card. Even though I had to overcome some obstacles, working on this project brought even more good things. In the end, I was able to raise $345 for the YMCA youth memberships, a little more than half of what I wanted to raise. This could either sponsor one youth YMCA membership or give the option to let several kids participate in summer camp activities. Getting $600 for my project was harder than I thought because fundraising was more difficult than I anticipated. I set up the wellness committee at the school and we have had several successful meetings. We talked about several plans to implement soon and I plan to open up the community to anyone who wants to join relatively soon. I volunteered a little more than 20 hours at the YMCA and I got to know the staff there very well. Since I was working with the YMCA a lot, I was invited to go to Washington, D.C. with a group to take a tour of the White House garden and the interior of the White House. I learned a lot about the White House and saw all the healthy and exotic plants that were in the garden. It was fun because I was the only child volunteer formally invited. I saw a lot of sights around Washington, D.C., and I also saw the First Lady, Mrs. Michelle Obama, she was exiting out of a special exit. I discovered that if you really put your mind to something when you do it, you can achieve great things and opportunities that you never knew were possible. Some advice I have for the seventh graders are, start your project early because due dates can sneak up on you. And don't be nervous when you speak up here. It's not as bad as you think. I would like to thank my parents for supporting me in this project. All of my teachers and administrators who are part of my wellness committee, I could not have been successful with their, without their help and support. My advisor and my advising group for helping me through the process and giving me project ideas. The staff members at the YMCA, especially Ms. Bergen and Ms. Murphy for helping me, and to the school for giving me the opportunity to do this. Thank you for listening. what amazing students we have here at the FCCPS, and I truly hope that you're able to see that today. Um, before we leave, I have a couple of people that I would like to thank. Um, Mr. Peter and Ms. Wolf, who are our capstone coordinators, they are the ones who work with the advisors and with the um, students in order to, to create and to make sure this process stays on track, as well as Mr. Peter for running today's PowerPoint presentation. Thank you very much. Mr. Benjamin and Mrs. Basile for recording these productions for us today. Thank you very much for your help. <laughs> Mrs. Schwab, Mrs. Frangillo, and Mrs. Gilberti for braving the elements of Nemo yesterday and coming in to set up and putting up the capstones at the back 
of the room, as well as the eighth grade parents who helped to put those together. Thank you very much. And last but certainly not least, Mrs. McGovern, who has um, coordinated the lunch for us tomorrow. We'll thank her again tomorrow, but thank you guys very much. I could not be more proud of the group of students that got up and presented today. Not only did you speak from the heart and talk about why these projects are so important to you, talk about the obstacles you face, but also talked about what you learned from them. So congratulations, you did a fantastic job. Thank you so much to the parents. who came and joined us today and for your help and support through this process. I know that it is very difficult for, it is a year-long process that you are supporting them through, and they would not be nearly as successful as they are without your help and support. So thank you. We all need to give our parents a We are pushing up against lunchtime, so I'm going to give you guys some...